There we go. We're live. All Dylan, right. We're live. Uh, You're on. Awesome, everybody. So welcome to this special presentation. So one thing that we were, I was in the pre-chat here before we got started, I was talking to some people about, we're excited about this particularly because uh, bundling is a really good opportunity throughout the year. One of the reasons I'm especially excited and I'm going to have a lot of questions about is as it relates to creating some special bundles and some targeted bundles in quarter four for the holiday season and for Christmas. Sally in the chat asked me here, she said, uh, Dylan, why did you say that this was going to be the, the best Q4 ever? And is it because of COVID? And the answer is, well, yes. So for those of you that aren't aware, online sales have went up significantly um, due to COVID, significantly. And that's not going to change this year either. Uh, something to be aware of if you guys uh, didn't see the news. Target and Walmart are going to be closed on Thanksgiving this year for the first time in quite a while. Another retail, major retailers have uh, been following a suit on that. So what that means is there's going to be less of an influence on physical retail this year. It's going to be a much strong, much stronger for online retail. So we definitely want to make sure that uh, for quarter four especially, that we're putting together some strong bundles for us and some of our wholesale clients and, and other vendors that we work with uh, this year. That's something that I'm really excited about. But I know that, that I, I don't want to make it sound like it's just about Q4 bundling or anything like that. Bundling is something that makes a lot of sense throughout the year, and there's a lot of examples of that. Uh, but yeah, so I, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll shut up a little bit and let you give your own intro, Barbara. No, that's all good. First of all, thank you. I am grateful we have a lot of these shirts now during COVID. I am very grateful that you uh, are introducing me to your tribe and letting me share uh, what I uh, what I have to share with them. As you see, I, I've teased you with some props back here. I I'm actually going to show you some fun some fun bundles towards the end of the presentation. I'm going to give you a ton of content, so uh, make sure you've got a pad of paper and a pen. And um, we are we are unicorns in this road. Yes, I love unicorns. So I use unicorns a lot as examples of fun bundles for a niche market, and you're going to see that in the presentation. So just be aware, I'm not crazy. I just like unicorns as a passionate market. <laughs> Uh, so yes, I agree with Dylan completely, 1 million percent. Um, so I've been watching uh, like Target and Walmart and Kohl's and uh, all the big, big box stores, their investor sites to see what they're telling their investors. And Target is saying that the types, type of buying will be skewed even more this fourth quarter to people who are buying things based on more on emotion than what they just need to run the household. And the other thing they're saying is they believe that fourth quarter sales, that's usually like truncated into six weeks between Black Friday and the week before Christmas, um, will actually peak earlier. So they're starting a lot of their promotions earlier this year. And that's just two pieces of information I got off of Target's site. I'm actually uh, gonna give a, a Q4 strategy session on Sunday, and you'll see how you can be a part of that um, during this presentation. So shall we get started? Do you want me to just dig in and start talking bundles? Because I've got a... I, I think so, yeah. All right. So I'm going to I'm gonna um, get rid of your pretty face, sorry, and, and my pretty face and just uh, start the presentation here. So share screen from over here. Boom. All right. Let me get rid of... You don't need to see my mug while... Can you guys see my presentation? Yes. All right, so let me come over here and do this so I can see it on my screen. Do, 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 do. Ah. Can you still still see it or did I mess that up? It's gone now. It's, it's gone. I see, I see it, that, that desktop or whatever. I can redo it. I was just moving. I've got multiple monitors, so I was just moving it to a different monitor and it kind of messed it up. So here we go. Now can you see me? Yeah, that's it. It's in uh, the... Yep. All right. Can you see me now? Let me get my glasses on so I can see the screen. And we're going to just, hey, um, this is going to be high energy and uh, you're going to be taking notes and interacting. I believe that people learn best when we're engaged with one another. So I'm going to give you a little assignments in here. So get ready, grab a cup of coffee and pay attention and be present. Uh, turn your phone off, get rid of all distractions because we're going to have some fun for the next hour, hour and a half. So let me uh, see if I can stop my video and here we go. So I am Barbara Drazga and today we're talking about creating profitable bundles, not just seasonal, but that sell year round on Amazon. Though we will touch on seasonal, 
towards the end in the Q&A, I will show you a bunch of real life bundles and also some fun bundles I conceptualized this morning when planning for this presentation and I grabbed some props so I can show you uh, how to um, brainstorm bundles just by walking around your own house. So today you're gonna to discover how to plan your bundles before you spend one penny. One of the biggest mistakes people make is they go out and buy a bunch of stuff and then try to cobble it together. I'm gonna to show you how to do your research up front. And then how to niche your bundle concepts. And um, hey, do me a favor, Dylan, and make sure you're monitoring the chat just in case something, there's a glitch or something, you guys can't hear me. Just wanna make sure that yeah. you got it? Yeah. Good stuff, okay. So how to niche your bundle concepts. I love niches because the riches are in the niches. I'm sure you've heard that. How to keep competitors from hopping on your listing forever. How to leverage no profit wholesale. How many guys have scanned a wholesale catalog and there's zero profit, but great BSR, like super great selling products. And then most people will throw those catalogs away and say, ah, okay, I can't buy from the supplier. I think those uh, wholesale catalogs are the most valuable for me as a bundler and I'll show you a little bit why I believe that in this presentation and then how to find suppliers who are going to beg you to sell their products. Those same suppliers who tell other sellers, nope, we don't take new Amazon sellers. They are going to be thrilled to hear from you. Tickled pink. Here we go. It all started with a rubber chicken and a dream. That is my cat Gizmo and the very first product I sourced to sell on Amazon. It is actually a squeaker a uh, dog toy, but my cat channels dog, so he loved that toy. And when I squeaked it, that, that look on his face was pure joy because he knew I was going to throw it and he would drag it around by its foot. Great toy, right? But I needed to find something to get started with Amazon Wholesale so I could test out how to send in, um, how to send in product, etc. So this was actually a multi-pack of three of these squeaky things. And this led to my first bundle of, well, dog toys, but all squeaky dog toys. And I'm gonna sh actually show you one of the squeaky dog toys, it's hilarious, that's in the biker niche market, a little bit later in the presentation. So that was my entry into Amazon was uh, just a, a bag of a bunch of, a bunch of these multi-packs to, to figure out how to sell on Amazon. And that, that's how it started, with a rubber chicken and a dream and my cat gizmo. So let me uh, know a little bit about you. Here is your first interaction. Tell me in the chat so I can make sure that I'm, uh, that I'm addressing everybody so that I don't want to lose anybody in this presentation. I want us all to be on the same page. So tell me, are you brand spanking new at sell on Amazon? Put a one in the chat. Two, if you've been dabbling, but you're now ready to get serious. And three, if you have some chops, like Dylan's gonna be putting a three in there. Dan's gonna be putting a three in there. So tell me in the chat, are you brand spanking new? Put a one, two, you've been dabbling. Three, you have some chops. And Dylan, tell me what people are saying in the chat. I, it's, gosh, it's, there's a lot of people answering, but it looks like a mix of uh, between one and three mostly. Awesome. Okay, and here's the, this was a trick question because it doesn't matter where you are. You can bundle from the get-go. You can increase your sales by bundling as somebody who's got some chops and been doing it for a while. And if you're just dabbling, you can add bundles straight away. So it's for everybody and anybody. There is no skill level involved except for some creativity and an understanding how to do market and competitive research. All right, here we go. The struggle is real. Let's list off all of the complaints we hear in Facebook groups of people saying, these are all the reasons why, repeat after me, Amazon doesn't work, Amazon doesn't like me, did I miss anything? The selling price is too low. The buy box is not rotating. This is a great seller, but there's no margin. Too much competition on the listing. Amazon keeps hopping on my listings, not enough profit in the supplier catalog. And the big one, wholesale suppliers won't approve me. So I am here to tell you that bundling solves all of these complaints. Do you believe me? Put yes in the chat when you believe me. And if you don't believe me, you will by the end of this presentation. And if you, uh, if you don't believe it by the end of the presentation, I haven't done my job and you can ask questions in the Q&A. Here we go. Why bundles? Because you can sell them at a higher price point and profit margin. You can beat out your competition to a sale by adding value, build related products to own a market niche. I'm gonna show you how I uh, cross-pollinated one product into multiple bundles based on the same base product. Customized to ward off lazy sellers. You know those lazy sellers who just throw in a keychain to a non-related bundle? 
um, you're going to, you're going to blow them out of the water, provide Amazon loves it when we love on their customers. So you're going to provide an amazing customer experience, and this is going to give you the competitive edge with suppliers. So let's talk about the potential of bundles. This is Anita Breeze. If you guys are in the Amazon community groups, I'm sure you are. You know Anita. Anita is a master bundler, and uh, her nickname was the Bundle Queen. And even she was involved in my training and um, was able to add new skill sets to her already pretty strong uh, bundling capability. So even if you're bundling now, I'm going to show you how to do it even better. So she started with, of course, a unicorn themed bundle based on my training. She uh, decided to try it out. And um, her cost was $6.75. Her in pocket profit after expenses was 14 bucks and change. And she sold 36 of those suckers really fast, 509 net profit in one week with one bundle. And she was kicking herself that she didn't source more and, and, um, and put more into the warehouse. But she raised her price and then made that a regular product in her arsenal. So this is, the pro this is the power of bundling. Even from a really low standpoint, you don't have to invest a gazillion dollars to test out a bundle. She only had a quantity of 36 of these things, the selling price of 25. So it's very reasonable to source product for bundles without breaking the bank in order to test them out. So here is, in a nutshell, grab a, either screenshot this or grab your pen and scribble fast. My unique approach to bundling is, now, here's how I differ from everybody else who's doing bundling pretty much, unless you've followed me in my trainings. Um, most people start with product. I do not. I might start with product for uh, just to get inspiration, but then I immediately switch to identifying my passionate market and understanding why, what their needs are, what their passions are, what their problems are. And I'll tell you in a minute what my three questions I ask in order to get my brainstorming going around bundles. And then I identify competition, not competition on a specific bundle, but competition for uh, somebody selling some product to the market that I want to serve. I wanna see who's selling what and what they're not selling. And then I wanna build and evaluate bundle concepts so you can test them out just like Anita did with 36 bundles. And then I wanna identify my suppliers, competition proof my bundle the right way. And I'll show you some examples of what that means test and refine and then drive traffic either from Amazon pay-per-click um, or off Amazon. However, I like, uh, I like the challenge of optimizing my listing so well upfront that I get organic search traffic right out of the gate. That's my goal. So here are some types of bundles and I warned you I was gonna use unicorns <laughs> as an example, so bear with. Uh, you could do solution bundles where it solves a problem. Let me give you an example of that. About a year and two months ago, I busted my back up unloading wholesale products from pallets, believe it or not. And I went down in my drive on my knee and I, I did some serious damage to it, something called an iliopsoas. And I was flat on my back for almost two weeks, could not move off the couch, had to crawl to the bathroom. I'm not making this stuff up. So do you think, how motivated, put in the chat, how motivated on a scale of one to, one to 10 do you think I was to solve that problem? One to 10, I'm in pain. Like I'm in spasms. Uh, they're putting me on like pain pills that are making me vomit, sorry. Uh, I, was, I was in bad shape. I was like right in my will in my head. I was so scared. On a scale of one to 10, how motivated was I to solve that problem? Put it in the chat. You should all be saying 10. So all I could do is lay on my couch with my cell phone and you know Netflix and order stuff on Amazon. I ordered a massage table, just a couple of things um, off the top of my head, a massage table, a tourmaline um, stone heating, infrared heating pad for a couple hundred bucks, um, every sort of back device I could find, um, muscle spasm tea, what else did I order? A bunch of heating pads and cooling pads. I was a motivated customer because I was looking for products that would give me a solution for my problem. So I like bundles that are solution oriented. You're solving someone's problem and also passion bundles. You're, so you're feeding their passions. And then, hey, uh, I want you guys to pay attention because I'm gonna give you an assignment in about 30 seconds. Here it comes, ready? So activity kits, refill kits, all the things people are buying right now um, during COVID that they're gonna need to refill. If it's a craft kit that's based on yarn and they use up all the yarn, they gotta buy more yarn. If it's a, I just bought a, um, uh, a, 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 a mop, but it's a robot mop. <laughs> I swear, I swear to God, I just bought a robot mop. It's en route from Amazon. And um, 
it's got these pads that you change. You just hit a button and it'll clean my, my hardwood floors, right? Um, and, and mop them. But then it's got a pad, like a Swifter thing, that you change. Well, you could create uh, a bundle of just those, because there's three different kinds of pads, just those pads. So think about refill kits of things that, a, a product that people have bought, and then they use up another product in order to use that. Another example is uh, during COVID, beginning of COVID, I bought myself one of those just uh, uh, it sucks the air out of like, I, I bulk make food and then I put it in a plastic bag and then I stick it in this device and I hit a button and it sucks the air out and seals it. I forget what it's called. Well, I'm running out of those bags, right? So if you um, sell a, a refill kit for products like that, then you've got repeat business. Ready to give gifts. So there are two markets going into this Q4 that are exploding because directly because of COVID and that is the baby market and the pet market. People are home, doing what they do together at home a lot. Add nine months, you're into October, November, December. So baby market's gonna be huge. Pet market, uh, uh, adoption centers, pet adoption centers went empty during COVID because now people were home and they could uh, invest the time to, um, and the energy to raise a puppy. So ready to give gifts. You're gonna have a lot of puppy first Christmas baskets opportunities out there in my opinion and then uh, bulk products so just sell to core organizations um, that require bulk products so there is of course more people doing more cleaning for like offices schools for example and they need bulk cleaning products they need bulk uh, you know scrub brushes and wipies and, and whatever so think bulk products so here we go seasonal versus top uh, seasonal topics versus evergreen I love having a base of evergreen bundles, which means they're gonna sell year round. And then of course, I'll get a pop in sales during uh, fourth quarter, during the, the high peak sales time on Amazon. But then I add seasonal bundles for those times. And this is just a, a quick, here are some of the, the seasons that you can go for, uh, but I do not build my seasonal bundles first. I build an evergreen stable of bundles so that I have that regular income. And then I add the pop of Christmas and Halloween and New Year's, oh my, bundles. So niche market research, know your market before sourcing. This is really important. Identify passions and problems, passions and problems, passions to feed, problems to solve. Conduct deep market research using a couple of, there's a lot of tools out there for keyword research. Pick one, pick two, pick three, and do your research before you source anything. And then look for niches, where you can combine high volume keywords. I call them mashups. On the right hand side, you're gonna see this, this funky guy wearing a unicorn costume. So I've got a mashup of Halloween and costume, for example, or cosplay, or, I'm sorry, Halloween and unicorn, or cosplay and unicorn, right? Or fantasy and unicorn. That's my mashup for this, if I were to do this bundle. <clears throat> so now it is your turn. Type in the chat. Let me turn on the chat here so I can see it. Type in the chat. What are you passionate about? But here is your specific instruction. I want you to niche it down. Don't just tell me I'm passionate about food or dogs. I wanna know what is it about food that you're passionate about? Do you like gourmet food, keto food? Um, how about dogs? Do you like a specific breed of dog? Do you like uh, training dogs, potty training dogs, dog sitting, uh, elderly dogs? So put in the chat what you, are, you personally are passionate about. And this exercise is gonna help you learn how to be a cre creative brainstormer. And for those of you who say, I am not very creative, uh, there's always one in the group that says, I'm not very creative. I'm gonna challenge you on that because uh, I think everybody is born a creative soul and I'm gonna help you be creative. All right, here we go. I'm just gonna uh, choose a few of these. So now fitness, I want you to niche that down a little bit. What kind of fitness? I just bought a bouncing thingy, a, a trampoline, like this power trampoline, and it's a whole thing. Like there's a, there's a whole niche market around people who do trampoline fitness, for example. So vegetable gardening, cool. And we can niche down the vegetable gardening even more and make it like um, a small space vegetable gardening. I have this, this aqua machine that I put these pods in, I put the light on, it's for counter space, right? I'm sure it's called something else. <laughs> uh, skin products, anti-aging. Okay, so how about anti-aging for, um, uh, how can we niche it down? Give me a second. I'll think about that. Anti-aging. I'll have to think about that. Sim racing. I have no idea what that is, which means I'm going to go look it up because that's pretty cool. Hockey. How about hockey for uh, the age group of three to seven? Okay. At-home fitness gear, baby products, chocolate. What kind of chocolate? I like dark chocolate. 
right? Pugs, oh, oh, I wish I had the pug blanket here. I do. So pugs and unicorns are really fun mashup. It's called a pugicorn or a unipug. Go, go search it and look at the, um, look at the search volume for pugicorns and unipugs. It's insane. Outdoors, kitchen utensils. What kind of kitchen utensils? Uh, good artist brushes. Cool. But what kind of art? So artist brushes for people who work with oil paint would be a way to mash that up and really niche it down. Let me roll down here and see if I can find a couple more golden retrievers. How about um, golden retrievers, but niche that down into puppies, elderly. For instance, there's a whole set of problems to solve for, I, I think it's um, elderly uh, German shepherds. They have hip problems from what I understand. So you could focus just on a niche within a breed based on their specific problems. Maybe a breed that has long hair that has trouble keeping it Un untangled, etc. Uh, low carb keto, cocker spaniel, cookies, candy. Got it. Okay, so do you guys want to understand what I mean by niching it down? When you say cookies, that's way too big of a passion. We need to niche that down. Candy, same thing. Uh, birding, running every day, doing it for 40 years. Okay, so a niche is um, professional runners. So runners who have uh, maybe they get uh, a certain kind of injury over and over or they want to optimize their training. So if you focus on runners who are professional and been doing it for a lot, like long, lifetime runners, that's a niche. Okay, so does that give you guys some ideas of making wigs? Oh, cool. Uh, see, I'm all uh, into the chat now. I'm so excited about what you guys. Small ponies, that's a fun niche. Everything from nutrition to, um, to putting you know, bows in its hair, showing small ponies, uh, saddles and stuff for small ponies. Uh, that's a fun niche. Uh, I would I would dig a little bit deeper into that. Whoever puts small ponies, senior fitness, a great uh, organization, but niche that down. Organization for what? Organization for people who are homeschooling their kids between the ages uh, at kindergarten or or elementary school ages. That's a niche. Organizing organization for someone who's homeschooling high schoolers. There's your niche, and then feed products to that. Do you guys see that my approach is different from? Oh, let's just go find a product and source it and see what we can add together. I start with the market. Tell me you understand what I'm talking about. Put yay, Y-A-Y, in the chat if we're all on the same page. And I will save this chat so that we can, uh, we can all benefit from all the great advice and, uh, and niche markets that people are putting in here. Merp, yay, 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 good stuff. All right, thank you guys for playing in my sandbox. You are awesome. Corgi hip problems as they age, boom. Jaffa cakes, I don't know what that is, but okay. Some people are crazy about their chickens and hens. People dress them up, they dress their chickens up, they paint their toenails, uh, the little claw thingies, they paint them with nail polish. Yes, the chicken hen market is insane. They raise them, right? So you could have products that are all about um, uh, hatching them and growing the babies. Anyway, I could go on for hours about bundling them. I'm very excited about it, you can tell. So thank you for playing in my uh, sandbox here. I'm gonna keep going, take notes, here we go. I say, here we go, way too much. I'll work on that. <laughs> Competitive research. So after we identify a passionate market, we wanna know what's being sold on Amazon to that market. So like the elderly corgi with hip problems, I wanna know who is selling what kind of product to that product, or to that, to that market. Now I start getting an idea of what's being sold, what's not being sold, what's missing that this market really wants. All right, and then I'm gonna identify the sales volume because it's not all about identifying passions. When you brainstorm, uh, you brainstorm a lot of ideas, but then you need to apply criteria to those ideas to make sure that it is a viable market to build bundles for. So I use like Jungle Scout, Viral Launch, Helium 10. There are a lot of different tools out there, Ace Inspector Pro, to identify sales volume, um, to see how many, uh, in this market, how many people are searching for things in this market. And then you, I, I like to identify holes in the market, weaknesses in the product, and weaknesses in listings. And if you guys are uh, sourcing wholesale at all, you are so should be familiar now to identify weaknesses in products and the listings. So this is going to be a, a cakewalk for you um, on the optimization end. So step three, I make my bundle irresistible. If you'll pardon my French, I want people, when they see my listing, to say, oh, shut up and take my money. Okay, it's not really French, shut up, shut up. <laughs> it's not really French, but shut up and take my money, right? I want to create such a compelling offer for them that feeds their passion or solves their problem that they don't have to really think twice or look at other products or, oh, let me see who else is selling something. They look at my listing, they look at the product and they say, I want, I have to have this. 
And then I create an added value experience by customizing things in that box. And I'm going to show you, or in the poly bag, in the, in the bundle, I'll show you a live example of a, of a bundle that I did showing you how we used added value experience to lock down the listing and create an amazing really a uh, relationship with the customer. Pardon me. So your initial research on passion and problems is going to real what, reveal what a customer wants and needs. So write this down. Here are the three questions I ask. Who would buy this? Why would they buy it? And what else do they need or want? Those are the three questions. Who would buy this product? And we're going to practice that. I look over here because I've got some props over here. We're going to play with a little bit later. Who would buy this product and why? Um, asking the answering the why question gives you to their motivation. Like what are they passionate about? What problem are they solving? And then what else do they need or want? Those are the three questions I ask when conceptualizing a bundle. Um, now you've noticed we're on step three and I still haven't talked product yet because when I do the right research up front, that it significantly increases the chance that that bundle will be successful very quickly out of the gate. So you're, uh, make it unique, of course, never do a me too bundle where you're just throwing crap in a poly bag that does not serve a customer. Um, and ask the right questions. Not what can I throw in this bundle? I want you to ask what else does my ideal customer want or need? Here are the do's or don'ts, no me too products. So don't find a bundle that's selling well and try to duplicate it exactly. Because if they're doing it right and they're putting product in there from multiple wholesalers and custom products, that's going to be harder for you than if you were to create your own bundle and no product stuffing. So don't have a great bundle with a couple of uh, really great products that complement each other and then throw in a sticker just so nobody else can get on your listing. That does not serve the customer. And the number one rule when creating product bundles is customer comes first, not product. The product, once you understand your customer, the product will serve their needs or meet their passion. So when you think with your customer hat on, when you're creating your bundle concept, it won't even occur to you to stuff some piece of junk in the bundle because it doesn't serve the customer. Not optimized listing creation. If you're gonna go through all of this effort and energy and investment to create a great bundle, and then you put up a lackluster uh, uh, listing and I'll, we'll talk about, I'll show you a couple of examples of what's a bad listing, what's a good listing. So if you don't know what an optimized listing looks like, you're getting a snapshot of that in a minute. Poor photos, not enough margin, overthinking perfectionism. I have a lot of students who they, they've got a great niche market, but then they start overthinking everything and putting everything in the kitchen sink in this bundle to solve every problem the customer could ever have in their lifetime. And that's kind of a perfectionism thing and it keeps them from hitting the go button, from taking action. So, and then not enough margin. But this, this is a business, this is a business. We're here to make money and serve customers' needs and make money by serving customers' needs. But if you have a bundle that doesn't have any margin in it, then it's not a viable product. Doesn't matter how cool we think it is. If there's not enough, uh, if there's not enough search volume, there's not enough potential customer base, uh, and there's not enough margin, then it's not viable. Poor bundle example, here we go. So I want you guys to take a really good look at this photograph. Now, we're gonna practice being the customer. You are a, even if you're a guy, you're a parent, and you have a 10-year-old boy who loves Jack Skellington from The Nightmare Before Christmas, loves it, and he's got a birthday coming up. His 11th birthday is coming up, and you are planning this birthday, and you've got 16 kids coming. Let's pretend it's pre or post-COVID. You've got 16 kids coming, you know, mask and socially distance to the house, for this party and you've got cake and you've got his favorite flavored Kool-Aid and you've got, uh, uh, you know, everything or uh, balloons. You're ready for this party. Look at the contents of this bundle. Now picture yourself cutting the cake and pouring the Kool-Aid. What's missing from this bundle that is an absolute must have when you're having a kid's birthday party. Anybody in the chat get it? Shout it out. Shout it out in the chat. What is missing? Besides, you know, more decorations. I'm looking here in the chat here. Q&A, let me see, come up in the chat. Ellen, where are you? <laughs> oh, you want me to tell you? Could you please? Because a, I, lot of, a lot of people said cups. Boom, that's it. You see how I did the pouring the Kool-Aid visual? I was hoping you guys would get that. 
Yeah, and that's just the product itself. Now let's take a look. I love that you guys are in the chat. I can see it now. Tell me what else is going on in this listing that's gonna keep this thing from selling besides the $48 price point with no cups and no balloons, right? So exactly, bad photo, what about the balloons, one picture, glitter, cool, not enough pictures, not enough pictures, exactly. Um, you guys are, you're hitting on all cylinders. Thank you so much for doing a great, great job. Poor photos, keywords, lifestyle photos, garbage bags for cleanup. Uh, oh, I love how you're thinking, whoever said garbage bags. Eight plates for dinner, eight of dessert, not enough quantity of items. Oh, we got some bundlers, master bundlers in training in this chat here. You guys are awesome. I'm looking at your hats. Very cool. Yeah, hats, right? And the little blow things. Lifestyle photos, tablecloths. Okay, I think that, that is actually a tablecloth. And the, um, the silver, silverware that comes with it, it's cut off. So the picture is not even identifying what they're getting. If it, you know, they could think that they're getting cut off cutlery for some reason. So mismatched quantity. You guys are rocking and rolling in the chat. Thank you so much for playing around with, with me here. This is awesome. Um, basically, somebody said, basically this problem, this bundle doesn't solve the problem. Whoever said that in a nutshell, not only the, does, does the bundle not solve the problem, but it's doesn't even reach its, its customers. Doesn't even reach the customers. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you the flip side. Here we go. Oh, I did it again, sorry. <laughs> Good bundle, get fit. Now I was at the beginning of the year, I was of course, we're all, how do I get fit in January? Get some of that COVID weight off, right? Um, so I found this listing and I thought, this is a cool, and it's selling great. Uh, 6,600, 60, yeah, 6,600 in sports and outdoors. Really great listing, really cool product. Look at all these wonderful photos and lifestyle images. Now, let me show you how we can take something that's doing well and do it better by doing a mashup. Now, I like my mashups. So I'm a girl, in case you didn't notice, I'm a girl, and I would want one that's got pastel handles. And before this stuff hit in 2020, I was traveling a lot, I would want something that travels with me, which this does, because it's got a bag, right? And I like, what do you know about me? What do, what do I like? What is one of my fun passions, right? Unicorns. So wouldn't it be fun to have a pink bag, and instead of the bag saying Wen Feng on it, it could be uh, a silhouette, I just envision this, it's a pink bag with a silhouette of a woman going, Okay, I don't have many guns, but you know, a fit woman <laughs> doing that, right? Um, so when I'm carrying that bag, it I identify with the color and the image on the bag, okay? It could be a kid's version of this, so you, so you can have different variations of this with a smaller bag and a unicorn on the bag, you know, and call it Get Fit Unicorn Fitness. Ooh, I'm gonna go see if that domain is available. <laughs> unicorn Fitness, right? Uh, let me take a look at my unicorn coffee here. Okay, so how can I make this better? I would put, I would not put a brand name on the bag only. I would put an image on the bag that speaks to who would buy this, all right? So if this is for guys, I would stick with the black, keep Wen Feng at the bottom, which is, you know, his, his made up brand name. But then I'd have a silhouette of a guy lifting barbells, right? Just a silhouette on the bag. Because that's how the guy who buys this wants to see himself after he uses this product. The other thing I would add is, so I'd make a variation for a girl, but I would also add, if I'm traveling, and I can't remember how to use these fitness bands, I would wanna have a little wallet card, a laminated wallet card that slides right into my wallet or my purse, that's like, you know, that big, you can get them at, uh, I like Vistaprint for a lot of my, my small run cards, that shows me uh, three or four travel exercises on the front using these bands and four on the back right? And then not stopping there, I would do a version of uh, eight and a half by 11 of that with a dozen different exercises on the front. Let's say upper body exercises on the front and on the flip side, uh, lower body exercises so they can hang it on their wall. So do you see how I used a custom product? He, the only custom product he has in here is that bag, but that bag is a custom product doesn't add to the value it's just because it says wind thing. It doesn't add to the value of this bundle, but having um, a workout cheat sheet that I can travel with and hang on my little 
you know, my, my office wall, a living room wall, that adds value and doesn't cost very much to do. Do you guys see where I'm going? Do you see what I did with this? Right? He's got a great listing. So I wouldn't look at this listing as, oh, I can't compete against that. You're, you're not. You're making it better because you're going to mash it up with a niche market and then increase the value of that bundle in order to hit those uh, passionate markets. Do you guys understand where you, you get where I'm going with this? Do you see what I'm doing? Put yes in the chat. So I want to make sure that we're all on the same page. I don't want to leave anybody like in the dust here because I know I talk fast and go fast. So please put yes in the chat that we're, you're on the same page. You see what I'm doing here by putting the customer first, solving their problem or feeding their passion. Who would make the exercises? Um, that's an easy question to answer. I just, uh, we'll, we'll do that in the Q and I see I'm getting off track. Sorry. I will answer mash up. I will answer those questions in the Q and a towards the end. A lot of good questions in here. What's in that unicorn juice. I swear it's only coffee, but it is like, you know, coffee infused with, um, all sorts of vitamins, believe it or not. There's yeah, there's coffee like that out there. I'm a coffee freak. So I'm, that's a, a mashup for me. Coffee with nutrients and unicorns <laughs> try to sell me something. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, let me, <laughs> I get lost in the chat because I want to, I want to interact with you guys, but let me finish the presentation and then I'll do the Q and A. So where are we source? I like a viability question. Um, so I can answer this question any, any one way. There's no one way to do it, but for my evergreen bundles, the viability question is, do I have long-term access to my bundles products? But if it's seasonal bundles, the question, the answer differs is I could buy liquidation, I could do retail arbitrage, wholesale, uh, private label, um, small run wholesale, right? So uh, when I'm doing smaller lots of bundles, the viability question kind of goes away. But for my long-term bundles, I want to have long-term access to my bundles products. So retail stores, wholesale, be careful, by the way, going to retail, wear a mask, keep safe, social distance. I want to say that to just caveat here right now. Um, liquidation based products for use in multiple bundles. I'm going to show you an actual bundle I did based on a liquidation product I got. That was, I wish I could get it again. You can have stuff manufactured everywhere. US, China, India, Mexico, Canada, Taiwan, Guatemala, anywhere. Brand owners who will white label. I'm going to give you a couple of leads for white labeling companies in a minute. Etsy. I love Etsy. I love buying on Etsy. And I also love um, a, a lot of the sellers on Etsy just make these amazing products that I can actually buy from them and include in my bundle. And who, nobody's going to be able to compete against me on that bundle because I know the maker. And then advertise, promote, advertising promotion companies. So let's search, for example, I was doing a, uh, a bundle that I needed a shark. I needed a plush shark for. It was a kid's a plush bundle, a kid's bundle, and I needed a shark. So all I did, this took me 15 seconds to find. I typed in wholesale plush shark. And this company came up, top of the search, Joyssu, J-O-I-S-S-U. And this ready-made bundle, plush sea life bundle, has these six characters. This in itself could be a bundle along with like a storybook about sea life. Simple, easy peasy, right? So look at this, 54 cents each if I buy a couple of gross to put together this bundle would cost me about $3.350 with nothing else included in it. So, and I don't have to buy a lot to make this bundle happen. I could test it at, you know, buy 48 of each for 72 cents and test it out. But this is how simple it is to find suppliers for uh, bundling opportunities. Here's a search example on AliExpress. Uh, one uh, back to school season a few years ago, we were doing a bundle for college students. Listen to the, the niche market here. So how many of you went to college and lived in the dorm? I studied in Germany. I finished my university degree up at a German, German university, and I lived in this high-rise building for students called the Student, Studentenwohnheim. And we had this shared kitchen. So based on that image in my head, I thought, well, what could we have used in that kitchen that would have been really cool? It was full of, you know, it was girls in the dorm. It would have been cool to have this little uh, kitchen bundle to organize your stuff in the sink, organize your towels and the towels, organize, you know, hooks to organize things. So I found these three products on AliExpress with different color variations. So I could create uh, bundle variations based on color. And my aim is female, college, uh, new college students or college uh, students living in a dorm. Okay. 
So competition proof, step five, competition proof your bundles. How do we do this? We talked a little bit about it on that, uh, on the, the fitness band example. So I sourced from various suppliers. Now there are some suppliers out there and here are the ones I steer clear from for my bundles uh, in general. So there are a couple big suppliers. If you went to a trade show, they would have like 15 booths each, huge. But what they do is um, on their website, it says, we'll bundle for you. We'll take whatever products in our inventory and bundle for you. So at one, at one point, uh, about four years ago at a trade show, I asked one of their sales reps, okay, so you'll bundle this, 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 this. He says, yes, and let me tell you what our other customers are doing. <laughs> I was like, wow, this guy's telling me what my competition is bundling together just so he can make the sale of his products to me. So when I create a bundle using only his stuff and order from him, Guaranteed, he's going to tell all my competition what I did, especially if it's successful and I keep reordering, right? So is that moment, that conversation is like, I'm sourcing from various suppliers. No way I'm giving one supplier the ability to, to tank my, you know, my efforts to grow my business. And then I want to create unique packaging. I'm going to show you an exact example of what we did with a bundle with unique packaging that added value. Add a custom piece, puzzle, flashcard, planner, calendar, checklist, cheat sheet, certificate, recipe, all sorts of ways to do it. So here is an example. So these lovely puppets on the right-hand side, uh, there was a set of six, it was a liquidation. And it was a set of six uh, farm animals. There was a cow, pig, a uh, frog, bear, cow, pig, frog, bear, two others. I'll think of them in there. Really, really cute, super plush. And they were the, the nice ones. You can put your hands up in the head and then your fingers out on the side so you can make a move and animate them. They were really cute. It was a liquidation, I bought them all. So what we did was I put a, an adoption certificate in the box, but I made it personal to the child who would be getting these. So the adoption certificate read, hi, my name is, and then they fill in their name, and I am the proud uh, parent of, and then it listed frog, and then a line so they can name each of the puppets. You know, frog, and then a line that they could name the frog, pig, name the pig, bear, name the bear, cow, whatever. And then we created it, uh, an adoption box. It was basically a white box, but on the outside we had holes printed, black holes, to make it look like air holes. When you, if you've ever gone and adopted an animal and they have the little air holes in it, we just printed them in the outside of the box to make it look like they were getting um, these pets in a box. And then the box folded up and back. So on the inside of the box, when you flipped it around, it was a stage. So we just printed a stage on the inside of the lid of the box so they could flip it around and immediately have the box as a plaything. So we used that box as part of the value add. We had to have packaging anyway, so why not completely wow? I call it make them giggle with glee. When I open a box from Amazon or from anywhere, like Crate Joy something, and I immediately giggle with glee when I open that box because the packaging is cool and the products are cool and I'm so excited to get it, before I even opened it. That's what I want my customers to do. I want them to say, shut up and take my money when they buy it, and then giggle with glee when they open the box. So then we created variations, and this was a complete accident. So I had a local customer who was picking something up from me, and she saw the puppets. She goes, oh, can I just buy like a couple of those different because my dad golfs? Like, what the? Puppets? Golf? What are you talking about? She's, yeah. I think those are great golf club covers. <laughs> so after she left, I run to the Goodwill and I picked up, I don't golf, right? I picked up a big wood thing, golf club driver, right? Driver and a, a, a skinnier one, like two different versions, a skinny metal one, like a putter or whatever they are. I picked up two different sizes. I brought them to the garage. I put those suckers on. I'm like, oh my God, I actually have a whole different bundle here. These are whimsical uh, golf club covers. And we created a whole new listing just with those six golf club covers. I think we might have put in um, like a uh, cute little, uh, the things you stick in the ground to put the golf ball on. <laughs> Tell me what those are in the chat. What are those called? <laughs> right? So we had a whole different bundle based on the same product to a completely different niche market. Tease. Thank you, Tease. Sorry about that, guys. I know mid-century modern and a couple of other things, but I don't know golf. Okay, so promotional companies, just keep moving it forward. I'll talk a little bit faster to respect your time, Han. So a promotional company is, if you ever gone, I don't know, to your doctor's office or to a trade show and they, they're giving stuff away uh, with their logo, with the name of their company on it. 
I want you to think about that Wenfeng bag. That was a promotional item, that bag, and he just put his logo on it. But instead of putting a logo on it, I want you to put an image that you have created on Fiverr that speaks to your target market. So I could either just add a promotional company product to a bundle, or I could use promotional companies uh, products just to create a bundle in and of, of itself. So going, uh, let's say there's a, how many, how many have, have daughters? <laughs> how many of you have daughters or know anybody with daughters? And the daughters have hit that, that lovely age of 12, 13, 14, and they all have what in their hands? They all have what? Cell phones. So what if I created a bundle for the tweeners, you know, the 11, 12, 13, 14s? They like pink, they like unicorns, let's just make that assumption. And I just created a bundle with promotional company items, uh, but I don't put a logo or a name on it of my company. What I do is if they all like unicorns and they like pink, I make these all pink variations and then I have a fun unicorn image created for me that I own the rights to at Fiverr and I put that on these products, not the name of a brand. And I would do like earbuds, uh, the cell phone holder, the little poppet thing, and maybe this little credit card wallet case. And just put those four things together, but make all of the colors match. Does it make sense? You guys follow what I'm doing here? So I'm not sourcing the product i'm sourcing for the customer's passions or problems okay more custom ideas this is a fun a couple of fun uh grab your pen a couple of fun sites i like um hospitalitymints.com is, is really fun they've got pre-packaged mints uh and they you can also put your own image on mints online labels.com you can get all sorts of labels printed that I use, uh, I guess I could show you one of them now, like uh, here's a bundle of this, and I'll show you the contents of this bundle, who does that, right? But this is a sticker we put on this bundle, it's like a Day of the Dead teddy bear, because it's a Day of the Dead product. Okay, and I'll show you the, the content of that product when we get to Q&A. So Vistaprint.com, love Vistaprint, and I don't do like little cards on Vistaprint, I always do the eight, uh, four by six, because it's more uh, pronounced and useful than little business card size. Google is your friend. If you want to custom print anything, right now I'm looking into like creating my own motivational cards. Of course, unicorn themed motivational cards. Uh, so I just type in custom printed um, uh, cards or uh, I don't know what they're called. Well, I'll find it. So just Google is your friend. If you're looking for custom printed anything, put custom printed and then the name of it in Google and you'll find ideas. Step six in my process, you want to maximize your bundle concept like I did with the puppets that turn into golf club covers. Um, think about other uses for that product. Create variation versions for different markets like we did with the, um, the kids going back to college, just color variations. And then what this allows you to do. So let's say um, I've got, let's say that wasn't a liquidation product and I could buy those puppets all the time. And if I wanted to, I could probably go off and find a supplier for puppets, right? So uh, what it allows me to do is double the order of the base product. If I have two different completely variations, completely different variations for different niche markets, right? So now I can double my order and negotiate the price down for my wholesale supplier. And then it lets me leverage reviews with listing variations if the um, listing has multiple variations for like color and size, et cetera. Are you guys having fun? Let's take a breath here. You guys having fun? Put uh, fun, <laughs> put fun in the chat. So I know you're still with me. Sometimes I, um, I talk fast and I, I don't wanna lose you. Fun, 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 yay, fun, woohoo. So glad you guys are having fun. Thank you for being here and playing on my sandbox. Um, let me go over to, let's see the Q&A, see if there's anything. Okay, so there are some Q&A in there. I'm gonna get to Q&A in a second and I'm also going to show you some exact bundles that I created and then some bundles I conceptualized about an hour before this live, um, this live event here uh, just by walking around the house and pulling stuff um, out of my closet really. So if you just create, let's do the math. If you just create, now keep in mind, my goal is to create 10 new bundle concepts a month and I have this bundle journal like, I. I can't, once the creative juices are turned on, I can't limit it. I have so many ideas for bundles. So if you just create 10, just 10 a month, do the math, grab your calculator, 10 bundles a month, each of them averaging a net profit of $10. And you sell just 50 a month, a couple a day, of each of those bundles. Do the math a couple times. It's, you'll, you'll be like, wait, what, is that right? That equals $5,000 net monthly profit which is 60,000 net annually from just 10 evergreen bundles. And that's just 10 bundles. 
So let's say you multiply that by two and you got 20 bundles. You have 40 bundles, you have 50 bundles, you have 100 bundles. You become like this bundle monster where you're just pumping out evergreen and then seasonal bundles on top. Can you see the potential for bundles to have in your Amazon business? Do you guys see the potential? Go ahead and put yes if you see the potential in the chat. And another thing you can do with, um, so right now we've got, uh, we've got this free, I don't know if it's still free, we can pull things back from Amazon so we don't have stale inventory. What if you could take that stale inventory instead of it sitting around saying, what am I gonna do with this stuff? And create viable bundles from that inventory that will help it sell. And you'll make more money on it because your profit margin will be higher. Wouldn't that be cool to take that stale inventory and create bundles from it? Okay, so, um, invite, you know what, let's stop for some questions here. And then I'm gonna invite you to join the Bundle Masterclass. And I've got um, some live examples here I wanna show you as well. I've got a bunch of bonuses for you, but let's take a breather here and turn on Dylan and see if you guys have some questions for me um, while I talk to you about the Bundle Masterclass. Dylan, go ahead and start um, putting together those questions for me if you don't mind. So the Bundle Masterclass is my full blown, I teach you everything. If you think you got content on this training, you ain't seen nothing yet. Uh, it is chock full of um, niche market discovery, customer needs discovery. I show you actual niche markets. We brainstorm them together. Um, and then I've got uh, an entire um, eight mod modules broken down into different lessons where um, you, you watch the lesson and then you do the uh, exercise at the end and then post it in the Facebook group to show us to make sure you're on track and to help us help you stay on track. Product discovery, competition, automation, delegation, creating sales traction. I'm going to give you a bundling checklist. I like structure. I do. I like structure. I like creativity and then I put structure on it. So I need to have checklists where I am writing down this is what I need to do today. Check, 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 check. So I give you a bundling checklist so you can mark off step one, two, three, four, five so you don't get overwhelmed. Right? Sometimes we, we get overwhelmed and we, we screech to a halt and we don't get something done. Well, I'm going to help, um, help you move to, through the bundling process from beginning to end with the bundling checklist. You get eight training modules, 42. Actually, there's more than 42 now because I'm adding a few more based on some changes that have happened on Amazon, some Q4 strategy sessions, um, and a couple of other things. How to sell your bundles off Amazon. That's a new lesson that I'm going to be recording next week. Show and tell videos because I believe people learn um, in different ways. So I have screen presentations, I have over my shoulder, watch the computer, and I have where I'm just talking to you so that um, you can learn in different ways. Uh, lots of PDF printouts to help you in um, your worksheets and checklists, interviews with people who know things more than, uh, who are smarter than I am in areas like, you know, Pinterest marketing, uh, Facebook marketing, um, people who are experts in those areas. I interview those um, inside of the Bundle Masterclass. Private Facebook group with over 650 fellow bundlers now. Lifetime access to the Bundle Masterclass discounts. Regularly uh, updated content. When something changes on Amazon, which happens daily, I'm sure you'll agree, things happen. Things changes uh, are occurring at a very quick pace with Amazon. I'm on top of it because I am a live Amazon seller. right? I sell on Amazon. I am in the dirt with you guys. So when things change, change I'm on top of it and create new content to address those changes. You get the Bundle Masterclass Facebook group. Um, you're supported by other Bundle master, Masters. So people who have started with no knowledge of bundling all the way up to people who consider themselves good bundlers but come in and learn just a couple of things or completely new concepts that takes their bundling to a whole new level. Jerry Mills is one of my students. Um, she says, I bring my diverse skill sets to this deep dive course. I provide inspiration and know-how, identify unique niches, avoid hijackers, and maintain margin. And then are you ready to see what your VIP bonuses are? Because the guys at TWF, Dylan and Dan, asked me to give you a special offer. Dylan, do you want to take a pause here and uh, come on, come on live for a second and have a chat? Absolutely. Awesome. So uh, any, any, anything I need to address in the chat before I talk to people about what their bonuses are when they enroll in the Bundle Masterclass and talking about the offer? No, I saw some good questions, but I think we can wait until after. Okay, so let's talk about the bonuses because I know you guys are offering one specific to, um, to this offer here and we've never offered it before. So let's go. I'm going to give you 100 done for you bundle concepts. Do you remember I said I had this big notebook full? Of, I'm not kidding you. It's like 
it's huge, full of just bundle ideas. I can't help it. My brain is on all the time. I've got a, um, a ton of ideas for niche markets, passionate markets, problems to solve. I'm going to give you a hundred of them done for you bundle concepts. And with uh, a lot of the concepts, I've already fleshed out where you can buy product for it, what some of the competition is, the keywords you're going to hit. I'm going to give you a hundred done for you bundle concepts. And uh, I'm going to make sure you've muted. If you guys are, um, are live on this, make sure you've muted so we don't hear you in the background. VIP bonus two. I'm going to give you my dollar store supplier Rolodex. You know the dollar stores get their stuff from somewhere, right? Well, I'm going to give you the Rolodex of the companies that sell to the dollar stores. So you can get your dollar store products instead of paying a buck. You can pay you sometimes 15 cents for them. So I'm going to give you my Rolodex of where I buy the stuff that you'll see in dollar stores and put them in your bundles. VIP bonus number three on uh, Sunday, and you'll get the replay for this. Next week, I'm doing a live brainstorming to identify products, passions, niches, and demand to create Q4 seasonal bundles. It'll be probably uh, next, next Wednesday or Thursday. Don't quote me on that, we'll see what my schedule is. But next Wednesday or Thursday, we're gonna talk about what's selling, what I think is gonna sell more this, hi honey, hi baby, this, Q4, because this Q4 is going to be a little bit different than every other Q4 that we've had. And in fact, I think it's going to be, I'm, hope, I'm planning for it to be the absolute best qu fourth quarter that I've had since 2015, since I started selling on Amazon. It's going to be huge. So we're going to do a live webinar addressing some of the opportunities that are available specific to this Q4. VIP bonus number four, this is where TWF comes in. And there's just a cutie there in the, who is this cutie, Dylan? Who is this cutie? What's his name? This is my son. Hi, baby. What's his name? His name is Eli. Hi, Eli. Hi, baby. Hi, baby. Hi, Eli. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm, I'm easily distracted by little kids and, and pets. Okay, so the TWF boys, Dylan and Dan, have... Um, now, remember I was talking about people use tools to scan lists in order to find wholesale products and they completely discard the products where there's no profit, right? So I see those results from pulling those lists, no profit, no problem, because the, the low BSR, the low, the products that are selling like gangbusters, those are the opportunities that I can start looking at who is buying this product that it's selling so fast. Why are they buying it? Remember the three questions, who's, who's buying this product? Why are they buying it and what else do they need or want? And that's the basis for conceptualizing bundles. So the TWF guys um, are going to add a bonus where they're pulling a product leads list for us of products that don't make money for people who don't know how to bundle. And that's gonna be one of your bonuses. And then last but not least, I'm creating a new lesson. I branched out to other platforms and, and increasingly adding new platforms for my bundles. How to sell your bundles on other platforms. I've never done this lesson before, but I'm going to record what I have done in the past four months that's worked for me. Um, and maybe I'll have a couple guests on talking about platforms that I don't know, like Pinterest and Mercari. Uh, there's a lot of opportunity to sell off Amazon. And we'll add that as a bonus. And that'll be recorded in the next couple of weeks for y'all. So bonus recap, you get done for you bundle concepts, dollar store supplier Rolex. And if you're not impressed by the fact that I was able to make these fly in, then you don't understand that I spent an hour trying to figure out how to do that, right? We're going to give you, TWF is going to give you low, low BSR, no profit leads list as a, uh, a, just a treasure chest full of opportunity for niche markets. And then we're going to give you how to sell your bundles on other platforms. So Debbie Tremblay, one of my students, she says, from newbies to experienced sellers, it doesn't matter where you're starting, guys. It doesn't matter how much you know about selling on Amazon. This concept works regardless of where you're at in your e-commerce selling journey. Um, she says, I love, if you haven't figured out that I'm highly energetic in this webinar, you're sleeping. I love the highly energetic and unique lessons and never felt overwhelmed to keep up. I make sure Everybody comes along. Um, you can now you can go through the bundle masterclass at your own pace, but I don't want anybody to get lost. How many of you raise your hand virtually? I want you to physically raise your hand. How many of you have bought stuff, bought trading products, and then stuck it on a shelf? Don't remember you bought it, right? Uh, and then like a year later, you're like, what was the login for that thing, right? I'm not going to let that happen because I'm guilty of that as well. We are all are. So raise your hand um, and commit to that will not happen with the bundle masterclass. And I'm going to commit to that too. I want to make sure that 
um, everybody at least gets a bundle done, one bundle in 30 days, which is such a, a low bar to reach. I have, uh, I have full confidence that I can help you do that. I'm not going to let you uh, kind of get lost. You'll get regular emails every couple of days saying, how are you doing on lesson one? Post in the Facebook group, any questions you have and what your success is. Um, so I make sure that that doesn't become shelf help for you, the Bundle Masterclass. All right, so you get all this, the niche market discovery, customer needs, competition, product discovery, competition for your bundle, listing optimization, and creating sales traction on and off Amazon. And then automation and delegation. You can automate and delegate quite a bit of this process once you get it down and you start becoming, uh, you get that flow and you start becoming um, really good at it. Recap, you get all of this. You get the bundle masterclass uh, training that you can watch on any platform. You get our Facebook group. You get uh, a bunch of resources of done for you bundles and product leads. And then um, are you, yeah, okay. So are you ready for more success on Amazon? This is an actual t-shirt I made with merch. Kiss me, I'm a bundler. You can't actually go order it on Amazon, but only after you learn the bundle, then you're allowed to go buy that on Amazon. Kiss me, I'm a bundler. Do you want us to kiss you? Now, normally the bundle masterclass with the private group and all the bonuses is $6.97. We are, uh, Dan and Dylan have asked me to give you guys an amazing deal. Um, and we're going to knock this price down for you so that it makes it just an easy, um, an easy, uh, uh, an easy way to get started in bundling um, with a really low price point, of, especially based on the amount of training and the depth of training. If you see, I'm very detail oriented. So the depth of training um, is, uh, you'll get everything for $497. I'm only gonna uh, keep, um, allow you to buy until Tuesday. That's August 4th, guys. Sorry, not August 2nd, but Tuesday, August 4th. You get all of the bonuses um, by going to bundlemasterclass.com slash TWF. And you get the course, the Facebook group, all the bonuses. And then of course my love and support through your bundling journey. Was this helpful for you guys? Put, uh, uh, let's see, let's put an exclamation point in the chat. If this training was helpful for you, was this helpful? Give me an exclamation point. Oh, I got lots of exclamation points. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks. Thanks guys. It's always nice to get a little pat on the back when you're training virtually because you know, you're talking to the ether. Let's, um, I know you've got questions. So, and I've got a bunch of live bundles. Um, I want you guys to, to uh, we'll put in the chat bundlemasterclass.com slash TWF. And then I'm going to stop the share for a few minutes and answer some questions and show you some actual <coughs> My little goodie bag over here. Barbara, I'm going to pull some because we got a, we got some good questions in the Q&A. Bring it on. But we also have some good good ones in the chat, and I, I didn't I just didn't want to miss them. So I'm going to pop a few out of the chat and, oh, and see what you see how you get them. Um, well, and there's a couple that are just really easy. Like somebody had asked, you know, what is B, uh, what is the BS and BSR, and it's bestseller oh. rank. Um, but here's a good question: Do you ever FBM your bundles? Yes. Yep. So I started that FBM, like my wholesale and my bundles. I started that in April when Amazon throttled back my ability to send things in because I don't sell essential products. So I, I don't want to scare you guys, but I anticipate there may be some, um, there may be some issues coming in the quarter that we experienced in March and April. And I wanted to secure my business and secure my rank on my listings. So I now fulfill Merchant Fulfill and FBA on all of my listings. And I hold a little bit of my inventory back. Because here's the thing, if I run out of inventory in FBA and it's taking a while for my shipments to get, I've got a, a shipment I sent in five weeks ago for wholesale that is not checked in yet. But because I'm Merchant Fulfilling, I'm not losing sales and I charge more on my MF products. So yes, I am now Merchant Fulfilling and going into fourth quarter, I will do more of that. The other thing it does we, is allow me to hold product back to sell on other platforms. Yeah, we, we I mean, right now, I, I do believe that it is um, a, a good idea to be kind of running concurrent offers. And that's what we've been doing and, and what we've been suggesting to, uh, to, to, you know, brand management clients as well, is it's a great idea right now to run concurrent offers to to be able to, to, to do that FBM capacity. And another thing that I, I want to touch on and, it's not, you know, this isn't a scare tactic. This isn't just, it, it, it is what it is. Like, you know, it, it's been the, kind of the talk of the town in the group that the buy box has been rather inconsistent. And, you know, I, I, I do believe this is, I do believe this is anticipated 
um, logistics issues by Amazon regarding COVID. And I think it'll smooth out over time. But the point is, is right now it is an issue. Now, where we've seen, um, where we've seen a lot of, or where we've seen this problem most occur for us is when we're sharing lots and lots of listings. Like on the instances that were uh, exclusive, we've seen no fluctuations in our buy box. So this can be a way, and particularly with, if you look at it like the free period where you're pulling back inventory, this can be a way for you to take advantage of that free period and create products that you're the sole seller of. Now, some of them may not work. Some of them may just move your, move your dead stock. Some of them may end up sticking and you find a great lot that you can be the sole seller on for a long time. So it's, it's, it's something to consider with bundling. And I can, I can actually say this, like, you know, with our particular SKUs and, and the ones that we, per, we carry, um, we created a brand and it's an effect. It, it, it's effectively a bundle. It's a bundle of, uh, of different products and, and we repackage it and stuff like that. Um, the, and, and you know, that product, that product right now is actually our, it, it's our best seller. It's our number one seller. It's on pace to do a million five. Very so cool. it's like a lot of people really think, you know, from a perspective that bundling can be small. And I thought that way for a long time, you know, I, I looked at it like it's not, you know, like this is a way to, to make it, make a few extra dollars. But I can tell you that, you know, through our, through our recent experience that, you know, we've, 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 we've turned a bundle into a line that, that we're, we're probably going to ultimately be able to sell. So it's, you know, there's a lot of power in, in being able to do, to, to do this and understand it from a different level. Um, and it can be a powerful tool in your tool belt to make sure that, you know, you kind of balance the amount of buy box consistency that you see if you're sharing listings as well as being, exclusive on other ones. So I think it's a powerful tool. And somebody else had asked one question is, you know, do you ever develop your own packaging or can you develop your own packaging? And the answer is yes. Like, you know, I, I'm sure Barbara's done that as well. We, we did it. We used a company called Acres Packaging and they developed a box for us that, that fit our, our product. Spell that out. Acres, A-C- R E S. I actually, I don't know <laughs> entirely. It, it's funny. I can ask uh, Tim, Tim, Tim took care of it internally for us. He, he, right. he, and here's, he here's what I do with, um, uh, I look for a local packaging supplier also for like my non-custom boxes because shipping on that stuff is pretty expensive. And there's a local company about 20 minutes from me that will deliver boxes to me and they'll print them and deliver them. It's crazy. So look local in your local market for packaging, um, suppliers. All right. Um, right. No, I mean, it, it, it's, it's not hard to find. And, and once you do it, like once you, once you go through that process of, of doing it, you can start really creating some unique looking bundles and some, some adding some major value to, to your customers. Um, then there was one more question in chat that I wanted to touch on and then we can jump into the Q and A cause I saw some really good ones there too. And it was, do you take your own photos? Sometimes if I'm just, right. yeah, if, if I'm testing out a bundle initially, um, I'll take my photos, but uh, then I also use, I love Canva because I can immediately create a lifestyle photo in Canva using a lot of their templates. And um, then I'll buy some uh, lifestyle graphics that I can uh, just send everything to a fiber guy and pay him five or 10 bucks to make it all pretty. And then what do I use for, uh, I use deposit photos to um, buy images. And then I use, uh, uh, there, there's a lot of places. Uh, I'll remember in a second, glorify to strip the background out. And then also it creates a glorify social media images for me, a post for me based on those images. So, um, but then I have a guy locally who'll pick stuff, stuff up for me and he'll do the photography when I'm ready to ramp it up. So it's kind of. Right. So, I mean, for us, it's, it's really similar as well. We do, um, you know, for the, for the bundle that we launched, that's doing really, really well. Our first pictures were taken you know, by us, then we ultimately, once the bundle took off and we realized it had a lot of sticking power, because that's, that's the thing is you're able to create a lot of these fairly cheap yep. and it gives you kind of some flexibility in your testing. Yep. And then it's like, once something sticks, you can kind of pour the gasoline on the fire. You can upgrade your listing. Like you can really, really, really do it. And that's what we did. Like we used, we, you know, graphic rhythm design, which is Ann's company that designed some killer, killer graphics um, and, and really kind of pushed our listing over the top. So it's, it's like once that stuff's in place and, and you've, you know, you, you've gotten um, a, a great listing, then you can, you can really, really 
spend you, you know once you have a listing that you're going to be the sole seller on you can spend money on on making it be as optimal as possible but the point is that you get to test pretty cheap to get there like you, you know you can you can test with with a few lots and then it's like if, if something really works right or a few bundles if something really works that's where it just makes a lot of sense to move forward yeah so anita here she only had 36 quantity of a unicorn themed bundle so she only sourced 36 of each items in the bundle and she took the picture herself. And then when she realized, oh man, this hit, then she went off and did, I think she only had like a couple of photos on there, but then she did lifestyle images and um, in use images. So I actually uh, am very, am, am familiar with um, Dan, Dan, let me take a look at his bundle. He asked for some feedback on it. And I just want to give you a, a, a kudos that Dan, targeted a passionate niche market. He didn't just throw a bunch of stuff in a poly box. He got, he, uh, he researched the market, understood it intimately, and then created a bundle that fed their passion like crazy. So if your focus is customer centric, you should be successful with bundling. Right. Like one of the things that we were able to do off of our bundle, and this has added a lot of value, it's, it's given us the ability to launch other products is, yep. You know, we, we, you know, whenever you do follow that very, very customer centric approach and you create something that the, one of the things we did, we researched search volume, we, we researched every single aspect around that space and we found the right keywords. We found the right products to put in our bundle. And uh, one of the things that we've been able to do is uh, off, off of, off of the, you know, one of the inserts in the bundle, people can opt into our community. Yep. And we have a, at this point, I think we have, it's about an 8,000 person community um, developed in, in, in less than six months with, you know, and, and these are all, whenever we go to launch another product, these are all just rabid fans who want to buy your product again. So it's like, whenever she's talking about finding that passionate area, finding a product that really, really, really fits, like you can use that to your advantage and you can develop your own customer base to launch further products or do other awesome stuff with. It's really cool. Uh, I, had some thoughts for you, I had some thoughts for you. You could do a, a monthly subscription box to those 8,000 people, but you could also uh, do limited edition. No, that's what we're doing. That's actually oh, what we're doing. Cool. Very we're cool. launch a, a, a monthly subscription box. Yeah. Let me show them some examples. I know we have other questions and I, I've got like this, um, this fun thing over here. Sure. This is an actual bundle I bought off of Amazon because I'll buy bundles to see what they're doing to learn from them. Love this pack. Look at the fanatical niche market. It's Golden Girls. And it's a party pack. Isn't this beautiful how they did this? It's just gorgeous. Um, and I love this plastic box thing they used with the insert that, keep, that makes it hold its... Um, yeah, so I'm excited about this funnel. Um, just to, to look at how they did it well. All right, so I showed you a Day of the Dead bundle. We got Halloween coming up. So let me show you the actual bundle, this beauty here. So it is... How many of you ladies in the house love wallets and purses? This is the wallet. Oh, you can also put your cell phone in it so I can get keywords for cell phone wallet. And it also comes with a little wristlet thing so I can put the keyword. And it's got this really great, like canvas, right? What else do we want when we've got a wallet? Girl, we got to style it with a pashmina that matches. Right? There's the pashmina with Day of the Dead. saying right that's my bundle that's it but then we'll add it extra I put that cute little sticker on it I think I got that sticker at um, there's a place that uh, smilemakers.com and they sell stickers to dentists and doctors and they've got some cute stickers they got a unicorn and all sorts of cute stuff simple bundle right so how about wine glass bundle so the mashup for this, if you look at the colors, it's like teal and coral. And it says, um, you cannot live on wine alone. You also need chocolate. So we've got chocolate lovers and the color. These are, I'm a mid-century modern geek. I like stuff from the 50s and 60s. These are mid-century modern colors, right? So you can have that mashup. But then, when I, so I'm the customer buying this. I would put your customer hat on. I'm buying this wine glass. Why am I buying it? Myself or to give as a gift? So I made this a gift bundle by putting... Uh, a cute gift bag with it that's got sparkles because girls like sparkles 
that they can put this in as a gift, but now I'm giving this as a gift. I'm the customer, I'm giving this to my sister-in-law, who, you know, whatever, she's, um, and she's given a bottle of wine with it, with this wine glass. But the sister-in-law now needs a card, say, I love you. And then she, with the wine, she's gotta be able to put the wine, so there we go. Little wine opener, and then after she opens the wine, what does she need to do? Put it in the chat. She's got an open wine bottle, she's poured it into her glass. We're missing one more thing. What is it? Cork stopper, boom. This is the bundle. And then I put it in a box, in a, uh, a white long box that flips in. And then I've got stickers for wine lovers. Okay, so I told you earlier about the dog toy market and those, those uh, rubber chickens. So I found this rubber chicken for a niche market. <laughs> okay, ready? <laughs> here it is. Let's take him out of his wrapper here and I'll show you. Skateboarder, rubber chicken, with, I found him in an auction, look at this. I bought it at an auction. And he's skateboarding, he's got toenails that are printed, um, he's got his underwear sticking out, and it says chick magnet. Now, who would buy this? Remember the three questions. He's got earphones in. Who would buy this? Why? And what else do they buy? This would be a guy who's got a dog, right? A young guy who's got like a pit bull dog, like who's really any wow. skateboards. Now, what else can I put with this? Who else? Who buys this? Why do they buy it? What else would they buy? Make a bundle based on these niche markets. Isn't that fun? I love this thing. Okay, so another passionate market. The dachshunds. I want you guys to go to YouTube after we're done this webinar, and I want you to type in Celebrity Dachshund, and a dachshund called Caruso is gonna come up with a channel of over two million followers. Two million. Somebody mentioned pugs earlier in the chat. Pugs are a huge thing. So there are dog breeds, dachshunds specific, especially, that have a fanatical following, fanatical. I have dachshunds on wallets and baby blankets, and I, I put a dachshund on pretty much any product that I can think of, um, that I can create a bundle around, it's going on, a dachshund's going on. Okay, so um, this, um, when my mom passed, I found this in her stuff. And it is my, I pulled it out for you guys to show you that you can walk around your house today and start getting bundle inspirations. It's this lovely book, When You Were Small. It's so cute, it's like padded, right? And um, each of the page is when you were very small, what were the steps that you went through as a baby and you know, what is your family history? And would it surprise you to know that I uttered my first words or my first full sentences at 21 months? Is it right there according to my mom, right? So who would buy this and why? And what else would they buy? Okay, now keep in mind, a lot of people were quarantined and locked down back in March and April and they were spending quality time together. So I think the baby market come October, November, December, it's just gonna explode. There's a lot of more pregnant women now. Hey, it's the reality of the situation, right? So we're gonna have a lot more babies in fourth quarter. So something else I pulled out. I'm also a Star Wars geek and Star Trek, and you think Star Wars, Star Trek, right? So look at this Pez dispenser thing. I think I bought this um, at 99 cent store. It was 99 cents. But look, oh, so oh, oh, chewy, right? So what could you bundle with this? And why, who would buy this? and why, and what else would they want? Simple answer is some extra Pez, right? But how about some um, three or four other candy items that are Star Wars fanatical? All right, so what else did I find in my, okay. So um, there are people who sell jewelry on like Facebook market or Facebook marketplace and they do these whole videos of like paparazzi videos, whatever. So I found these in my little warehouse and this is a, um, a jewelry display case. So what bundles could you make out of these for those people who are selling jewelries and they need six or 10 of these and then they, they need the little pins that hold the jewelry on. See, so, you know, uh, this now solves a problem. Another passionate niche market, of course, I bought these for myself. These are wine bottle Christmas ornaments. See those wine bottle Christmas ornaments. So what the niche market for this is people who have Christmas tree, people who like wine. And people who like ornaments, frankly, I keep a Christmas tree up year-round, a white one or a silver one, uh, or sometimes pink. In the front yard, it's turquoise. But I put uh, like Easter eggs for Easter. And um, so different times of year, I put different types of ornaments. There are people like me out there, yes. 
So what if you did a bundle of ornaments for 12 different um, annual uh, um, holidays? Somebody would buy that, somebody like me would buy that bundle. So I have instant, you know, Easter, Valentine's Day, July 4th, right? So I could change out once a month. I could change out the stuff I put on those trees. So those are just a couple of ideas. Oh, here's some more. Uh, I bought these at a thrift store. I bought about 8,000 of them. It is a unicorn fidget spinner. And they had Gaylords full of these things at a Goodwill. And I talked to the manager. It's really nice. Talked to the manager, got a crazy deal, but I can um, create an entire, so people are bored at home, right? Their kids are bored at home. And those kids, some of the kids might have learning disabilities where their anxiety is through the roof, adults with anxiety through the roof. So what if you did a unicorn based toy bundle um, to, uh, to address those issues, right? for boredom and uh, maybe and, um, uh, dexterity, just off the top of my head. And the last one is, again, unicorns. Puzzles, selling like crazy hotcake. What if you did a puzzle bundle themed for mid-century modern, or all flowers, or all unicorns, or all dachshunds, and you found suppliers, different suppliers that had, uh, and then you also put with it glue, so when they put together the puzzles, they can glue it, and then a mat that rolls up, and then a little container, these are all the things I have for my puzzles, a container that holds the puzzle pieces. So these are just some ideas that I pulled from around my house this morning to give you inspiration. Let's get back to the Q&A. Remember, you can go to the bundle, uh, bundlemasterclass.com slash TWF to grab the Bundle Masterclass plus all the bonuses. Uh, you've got till Tuesday next week to grab those bonuses. Uh, for $497, I'm excited to have you guys all come join the Bundle Masterclass and I'll drop even more content for you as, um, as you go through the course. What other questions do we have? Yeah, well, I'm gonna make a comment real quick um, yeah. in that something that I've seen before um, doing wholesale for so long, selling so many different products. I've seen a lot of people have success with tiny value ads as well. So like they'll be selling a, uh, this is one that I remember us being involved with one time, it was a uh, barbecue product. It was a, a, a barbecue rub and some, like, so we were selling that, but then someone made an, another listing that was priced the same. They ended up pricing the same with a new listing they cr created, but they bumbled it with uh, like a baster. I was just thinking like one of those silicon baster things. That's exactly and, and where my brain went. Which they were able to buy from China for like, you know, 25 cents Nothing. per unit or whatever. And so they didn't even have to, they, so they could price competitively. So that what would happen is people would go to search that product and they would see, I can get it for 19.99 or I can get it for 19.99, but also get this baster with it. So people started buying that one and it, it only cost that seller 25 cents, an additional 25 cents. Probably not even that, for that silicon baster, probably not even that. Yeah, they, so they, it was like, they were able to take a lot of sales that way. And so there's a lot of opportunities like that where, you know. I just bought a ukulele. But that's the thing. During Q4, people are trying new hobbies. So I bought a uh, baritone ukulele, but it had a gig bag, um, a, uh, a tuner, um, a little cheat sheet for uh, the basic chords for ukulele. And there were people selling just ukuleles, but I bought the bumble because it's yeah. got everything I need. And, and I saw a lot of questions here. One oh, yeah. come, uh, so I'm going to just, I can answer a lot of them rapid fire here. I saw one question is, how do you get around IP complaints for things like Star Wars? And well, you sell, the thing is you sell licensed non-counterfeit pro yeah. product and the first sale doctrine says you're legally allowed to resell those products so that you're okay. Uh, getting approved to sell them is one thing, but being illegally allowed to sell them is another. Um, so that's not an issue. Uh, so a lot of people are asking like, Talk to me about prep. They want to know, do you prep the things at home? Can you use a prep center? Yeah, you can use like, prep center. Like, what, like, how does it work? There's a lot of questions around prep. It depends, prep. On, the it depends on the quantity. If I'm just testing out a bundle, if, if I want to stick this guy together with a baby blanket with um, dachshunds on it, I'll just grab from my inventory locally and, um, and put together a couple dozen and send them in to test it. But if it explodes, all the products, a lot of the product will go to a prep center and they just do it and send it in. And I started using a 3PL where um, now they will merge and fulfill for me too. I haven't transitioned everything over, uh, but I'll add that for fourth quarter is a third party logistic company, 3PL, where they'll drip feed because we've got a limit of 200, uh, 
uh, items per SKU to send in, I'll have them drip feed that product in. Yeah, and there's some, uh, some people were asking about uh, how you were talking about how you could go about creating the photos and getting photos created for the listings and using some of those services like Canva. Do you show that in Bundle Masterclass? Do I do you absolutely show that. In fact, there's two hours of training, two separate trainings, two one hour videos. It was so big we had to break it up from a company that actually does this. And he doesn't just teach you how to take photos. He understands psychology. He's got a psychology degree um, and he applies that to marketing. So he talks about how to set up the products in the photo to draw people's eye to the buy box. It's, it's insane how in depth he goes and how to use um, the right colors to invoke certain emotions. And so he just doesn't talk about, oh, here you just how to take a picture. It's how to photograph glass. That's a hard one. The wine glasses were a challenge, but we figured it out. Um, and then how to use, how you set up your images to get more sales based on the configuration of the products in the image. So yes. Yeah, a lot of questions about UPCs, like what do you do about UPCs? I was or... waiting for that. I'm glad you asked. So I'm just gonna say it out loud, right? I'm gonna call people out right here. If you are buying third-party UPC codes, if somebody told you to do it, knock it off. Amazon changed their requirements um, for third-party UPC codes and they banned them. You can't use third-party UPC codes legally and you run the risk of getting your, not just your bundle listing or any listing, but your ent entire account shut down. I'm not trying to scare you. I'm not trying to say that that'll definitely happen. Some people kind of get away with it, but I believe in building a business long-term. So here are the two ways that you list a bundle without breaking the rules or with following the rules. So you buy your own, um, you go to gs1.org and you buy your own set of UPC codes or you just go to Amazon and type in on the help in your Amazon account, G-T-I-N exemption, G-T-I-N exemption. And you apply for an exemption for that category. And you set, when it asks you, what is the brand name, you put in generic because you're creating the bundle. So it's a generic brand that you created. And then it gives you within like seconds sometimes an exemption to have to have a UPC code for that category. And then when you list the product, you choose um, generic as your brand. That's it. Do not buy UPC codes from a third party ever again. Please, I beg you. I'm trying to keep you safe. And yes, uh, I show screenshots of the entire process in the bundle masterclass. I'm getting a lot of questions, and some people are asking about GTIN exemptions. That's it. Uh, we just covered it. Yeah. And then a lot of questions. There was a, several questions that popped up, and I'll answer this one uh, certainly as a. Uh, Feel like I'm I have a lot of expertise in this a lot of people are asking well how do you get traffic to your bundles when you first list them and create them right and it's a pretty simple process I'll, I can break it down into three simple steps right it's like number one is if you've created it in a if you've created this bundle in a space where when people are searching there's so limited possible results that it, it's going to show your product that's one it's, it's it, did you do a good job of determining a bundle where there was high demand, but uh, low result uh, possibility. So that's one. Uh, sometimes that it, it, creating a bundle, it'll work out differently where you do need to create some artificial traffic, but that's easy. So the other thing is that you need to do is once you get your bundle listed, run ads to it. So that way it shows as the, in the number one position for people. You run some ads to it. So just, it's just a, you know, it doesn't, just a few dollars. It's not like you have to spend a lot of money. There's a few dollars to run ads so that it shows up in the number one position. And then the other thing, which I'll leave it up to you, how, how you make this happen. Um, but if, if you can get a, a couple re initial reviews on your product one way or another, you figure out how you can make that happen. But once you have a, a couple of initial reviews that are five-star reviews, it will significantly increase the likelihood that you'll get sales. So that's really the only thing is like list it, figure out a way to get a couple reviews and then, run ads to it and you'll be fine. Here's the thing, when I, when, when I make people giggle with glee, when they open it, just by, um, I use a, I, sh I should brought one in, I didn't, but um, if I'm merchant fulfilling and it's a girl related product, I'll put it in a pink poly bag. If it's boy, it's a teal poly bag. Just that little extra. The difference between ordinary and extraordinary is that little extra. And then I'll put, not only will I put a sticker on the outside that's related to, like if it's a unicorn product, it goes in the pink bag, it gets a unicorn sticker on it, and a unicorn sticker inside that they can now use and put anywhere. When I do these little things, I increase my ability to get 
not just get more reviews, but great, get great reviews. Because I'm putting my customer, I picture myself, I am that customer, um, uh, Amazon shows up, my, my, um, my little Alexa just beeped during our show to tell me I've got a package outside that's sitting by my front door from Amazon. I'm like, <laughs> what did I buy, right? Uh, I think I bought that, uh, that mop thingy, right? I'm like, ooh, I wanna get it. So I want to continue that feeling when they open up that box, I want them to giggle with glee. And then that compels them potentially to leave more reviews and higher reviews. Every little thing counts. Okay, yep. next question. What do we got? I say a good question here uh, is someone says, I'm selling a bundle of reusable cotton grocery bags, but it's not selling much. That's uh, because what of COVID. Forget the product. What problem does it solve? I want you to answer this to yourself. Okay, start making a list. What problem do these does this product solve? Yeah, I think I think the the big answer here. Well, the problem is they're not re they're not selling right now because a lot of people aren't going grocery shopping in person, and a lot of stores have banned reusable bags due to COVID. So that rebrand the product is it what I think the answer is. It it needs to become a tote bag. Not don't market it as a grocery bag. Rebrand it for something different now or for a different use. And pull them back if you can pull them back and separate the bundle out, and then create a bundle with let's say there's five designs in there. Um, and the designs, you know, one's a flamingo, one's a shark, one's a unicorn, it's just off the top of my head since I don't know what the design is. Um, then create a bundle for just the one that's got flamingo on it because then the target market is RVers. And the RV market has exploded, exploded in the past, past couple of months. So think about how you can repurpose the individual pieces of that bundle into a different bundle for a different market. Yep. this help? Is this helpful oh, yeah. for you guys? I know there's a lot of questions and we're not going to be able to get to all of the questions, but I am going to save all of them and then post them in the bundle masterclass. Um, I've got a bundle secrets group where I'll answer all your questions in there and I'll send out an email with the link to that group and it'll be just for, for this webinar. Okay. The only people that we're going to um, just get, get in there and I'll answer your questions based on this webinar for the next Tuesday and then I'll shut the group down again. Um, so if I don't get to your question, don't worry. I'll make sure that I cover it in that group for you. Just yeah, so people you know. are asking about replay. Uh, I'm assuming that I'll go, but as soon as you have it compressed and stuff, it takes a few hours to, for things like that. Yeah, so I imagine it'll go up in a few hours and you'll email that out. Yep, uh, absolutely. And then, uh, let's see, there was another question I saw. Oh, yeah, like, did you cover about how many initial inventory you send out usually for your test? Uh, it depends on the product. Like I said, um, Anita just sent in 36 on her first bundle. She just said a quantity of 36. So, you know, I might send it a dozen or two dozen, or maybe I'll try merchant fulfilling, which doesn't really, um, you know, kick in the FBA. Initially, I try to send in like a, at least a dozen just so that it's an FBA listing and then add the MF on it. But you don't have to send in a lot to get it tested. Right. All right, what else we got? Let's see. So somebody asks, uh, what is the downside though? So I'm going to challenge you, um, you know, she says, or he says, what if the bundles don't really sell? We are all learning after all. So let's talk a little bit about mindset and e-commerce selling in general and business in general. So I come at things as not everything's going to work because that's life, right? But my goal is to mitigate my risk on the front end. And by that, I mean, increase the chances of something I'm doing um, by preparing and researching more on the front end than just throwing a bunch of stuff up and hoping it works. And that increases my success rate. In business, some things aren't gonna work. And then the way do you approach that, that failure, I don't even call it failure, that learning experience, it will um, be directly related to your income level. So when you yeah. have a positive attitude, you say some things aren't gonna work, why didn't this work? Let me see how I can tweak it. When you come at um, any, anything that way, you'll be more successful in business. Do you have anything you want to add to that, Dylan? Yeah, actually, I, I guess I, I don't know. While reading some of these uh, messages coming in chat inspired me of something that I remembered a few years back that we did and, and something that I want people to be aware of as we approach quarter four. Uh, with quarter four, there are always going to be four or five like huge toys. I mean, huge, just absolutely gigantic, like going to sell hundreds of thousands of units on Amazon. Hatchimals. Uh, sure. Hatchimals is one that I remember from a few years ago. 
uh, the game Pie Face is one that I remember a few years ago. Uh, and then the, so an, one of the big ones for us where we actually took advantage of a bundle opportunity that I'm remembering now and actually did probably about $600,000 in sales, maybe more, was with Shopkins. And that was selling oh, yeah. Shopkins bundled with a case. With that, with a whole Shopkins, them. yep, a little carry case. And so be thinking, so everyone needs to do that is, is like figure out what are the, gonna be the big holiday toys this year and then figure out, okay, I can acquire those in the store or whatever, but what can you bundle it with that be a big value add, right? So in, How, let me, I'm gonna um, kind of retrain that question if, if you don't mind me, instead of saying what do you, would I bundle that with, I want you to ask yourself, what else do people need when they buy sure. that? Sure, yeah, because like Shopkins, the, the, the case solved the problem. You buy these Shopkins, these, which are these just these little toys that look and like they're food. everywhere, and, and they're everywhere. Like Legos and yeah. Yeah, it's it is. It's like you know, you're gonna step on them because there's no good way to store them. So we gave them a, we sold it with a good little piece of storage. And, I would have taken that one step further and done a custom box like I did with the puppets, where it's like a little um, a little storefront, you know, maybe a little. Um, uh, a scene of these different shops, like a bakery, yeah. an ice cream shop, and print that on the inside of the box so the little girl can play on that little backdrop. Pie, pie face would have been to sell it with, uh, sh come with shaving cream <laughs> or to come with different kinds of, sh like shaving cream, like, or other kinds of products that instead to use in place of shaving cream, like a variety of different things for that year, that would have been a thing. So it's like, you can be creative yeah. and that would really stand out and people, and that's, and that's what the thing is like, that's why it would work so well with what I'm telling you is because millions of people are going to be searching for that product. So they're going to see it especially if you run ads on, on it. So like, cause so many people are going to say they're going to buy yours. You're going to sell a bunch. So uh, definitely be thinking about that this for this Christmas. What are the things that, what are they going to be the hot toys? The hot Google. toy list comes out every year. Google it's is your really friend. easy. That's yeah. Right. It's really easy to know. And then you can just start thinking what, okay, what can I bundle with this? What, what do people need? What do they want? Cause like, like in, in Barbara's structure there. Okay. So 10 bundles a month. Doesn't that create a logistics problem? All products need to be bundled by us instead of using Prep Center. So I'm going to agree on uh, wording questions so that we can get to, um, um, responses, multiple responses that help us solve. It. So I would reword this: Doesn't that create a logistics problem? You're assuming that there's a logistics problem, and then all products would need to be bundled by us. That's another assumption that it would need to be bundled by us. So I would reword that as: Okay. As we ramp up bundles, and we do a lot of them in our business, how are we going to handle this logistically? And then you can brainstorm ideas. You can hire a local person. You want to know, I, I did this last week. It's a creative fourth quarter solution I'm going to try out. I'm in Arizona, and there's a huge spike in COVID cases, and I am being really careful with my health because I am my most valuable asset. Um, there's nobody taking care of me. It's me. I'm self-employed. This is what I do. So I'm protecting myself. So at an auction last week, I bought a 14 foot trailer, an enclosed trailer. I rented a parking space uh, across the street where I have storage units in a storage unit facility for $68 a month. I'm going to put a solar um, fan on the top of it. It's big enough that I can have a folding table on one side. I'm going to take the product I need prepped and put it in the back of the trailer. And then I'm going to pay a prep person and give him a key. I've got a regular guy, but I don't want him near me. I don't want anybody near me, right, in my space. I'm going to give him the key and tell him, okay, there's product in there to prep. Go prep them. And he'll prep it from the back of the trailer all the way to the front. And then we'll uh, either drag the trailer to UPS or we'll um, offload stuff into my minivan, which will drive to UPS. UPS isn't going to probably pick up at the storage facility. So I'm finding creative solutions to work around what might be a glitch, if I'm choosing to prep things locally right now because I'm selling on multiple platforms and it's my choice, I'll find a creative solution around it. And the cool thing is, I bought the trailer for 3300 and it's worth 5500 So after Christmas, I can sell it and make money on it. Boom. Or break even after, even after the uh, storage fees. Um, another thing is, you just use a prep company, but find one local. I mean, one of the things that we do, I, I wanted to touch base on this as well. We, we've, we've done it a variety of different ways. We have an in-house prep team for our current bundle, and that was because once we got it, once we got it established to a level, we wanted to create uh, very proprietary things to, to be able to add additional value. Smart. Um, but the, 
you know, for, for the vast majority of our bundles, what we do is we contact our prep center. We give them the specific components, ask them how, you know, what, what they think the best way is. And then we come up with a, a specific price for that item. So it's, you know, you don't look at whenever you're doing a bundle, this is a pro tip. Whenever you're doing a bundle, don't just look at a prep center's advertised rates, contact them and come up with a specified price for your product. And I, then I, I can just hear some of the negative Nellies in there saying, but doesn't that cost money? Well, you're in business. So here's the thing. If you're saving 10 hours a week, not prepping stuff, you can potentially sell more and leverage that 10 hours of your skills, your um, special skill set to do something else like contact wholesale suppliers, build new bundle concepts, right? So look at the bigger picture, not it costs me to pay a prep center. It's how much money and time am I saving? By outsourcing that I we've never personally worked with a prep center that didn't offer this service anyway I'm sure right. that there are ones that don't offer it that are more streamlined but we we every prep center we've ever worked with offers the service of creating packs because uh, it's it's as simple as you ship them the individual components and then you just tell them combine into X or Y and they do it it's right. it's, it's a it's no different than creating a multi-pack in most cases really so yep. uh, it's very unlikely that your your prep center that a prep center you would use would well, I mean, be able to offer this. One of our biggest wines is a is a flavored product and it has twenty four different flavors and our best seller is a is a bundle of one of each flavor. And what we did is we contacted our prep center and we said, "Hey guys, this is what we want to create. Um, what will it be here?" And then we had them send samples of the packages so they could see what it looked like and it, they just gave us a they just gave us a rate that was pretty close to a normal item because it was pretty easy to prep. All right. I've got one supplier in Texas who he will bundle for me. I've, it's one product and we put an insert in there. It's a, it's a chalkboard product that he didn't put chalk in when he had it manufactured. So I messaged him saying, can you insert chalk? He sourced the chalk for me. So it all came to his warehouse and his guys put the chalk in there, put my FNSQ label on it and send it in Amazon for me. Sometimes it could be that simple. Sometimes we're overthinking things too much. I think I must, might've put a chalk writing guide in there too, which was just a four by six that I got none at Vista Print. Come to think of it. Yeah, I did. So there's somebody who's asked a question a couple times in here. So I want to make sure since it's urgent to them that I get it answered. Yes, PPE, can we sell masks or bundle masks? What are the restrictions on bundles, if any? Don't some brands have restrictions though? So let's change the question um first if you have a question about what amazon is going to allow you to sell or not sell that changes on a regular basis and i i teach the basis of the psychology behind creating a bundle that meets a customer's needs and feeds their passions right the the uh, the outer layer of that is what are amazon's rules and restrictions at any point in time could change so i would always tell people ask amazon go check with seller central because the restrictions on ppe products have changed in the past couple months so they keep changing those restrictions so i would always say if you have a question about a restriction on a specific product that you can or cannot sell at this moment in time verify it with seller central and get the response in writing any other questions how else can i help you guys so remember to go to bundlemasterclass.com slash TWF to get all of these great bonuses. Let me show you the bonuses again. Boom. Um, plus the entire Bundle Masterclass course and the private, um, the private uh, group um, as well. And you've got till Tuesday to get these bonuses. You get the done for you bundle concepts, dollar store supplier Rolodex, Q4 bundle live webinar I'm holding next week on some of these ideas of what is going to be the hot toy for Q4 and what are some bundle concepts to start getting your creative juices going, for example. Uh, and the TWF guys are going to pull a low BSR product list where there's no money in the listings to give you a jumping off point to, for your creative um, brainstorming on what types of products you can bundle right away. How to sell your bundles on other platforms. Go to TWF bonuses or TW, uh, bundlemasterclass.com slash TWF. And that will get you that deal. And again, sorry about that. It's Tuesday the 4th. <laughs> I don't know what day of the week it is half the time. What other questions do we have that I can answer for you? Uh, somebody asked uh, how to create a listing. We're going to show you that in the Bundle Masterclass in depth. Uh, I wish there was a local prep center for me. The closest are two to four hours away. So how can you fix that problem? What is the problem you're trying to solve? Ask a different question and you might um, 
to find some creative solutions. Uh, let's see. Any other? Well, I mean, ours is ours is ours is fourteen hours away. Our prep center is. Yep. And I have uh, prep centers in different parts of the country. So if I've got products coming uh, into California or from suppliers in California, I'll have a West Coast supplier because my shipping rates to that supplier from the West Coast are cheaper. And then the inverse is true, uh, converse is true, whatever the opposite is true on the East Coast. Okay, uh, does anyone start prep center? Okay, so I'll, I'm looking at all of the questions in here. And all of these questions are addressed and solutions are provided in the Bunmo Masterclass. Uh, yeah, you save money on shipping if you find a local prep center because I don't have to ship the products. If the products are in my possession, I don't have to ship them twice. I can just have them come pick them up. Yeah, but, you, but usually when you buy them, you can just have them shipped direct to the prep center. So it never even matters. Yeah, we're getting in the, exactly. And we're getting in the weeds about prep. I want you guys to think about um, how bundling is going to affect your, what is your snapshot of your Amazon business right now? And what do you want that to be through fourth quarter and beyond? And how can bundles help you get there? So focus on what, instead of the, the, the individual logistics of, you know, how to prep something, and that's all covered in the bundle masterclass. I want you to kind of think about the bigger picture of if you could just create 10 bundles, 15, 20 bundles, evergreen, seasonal, it doesn't matter, in the next 30, 40, 60 days to get to take advantage of the crazy sales volume I believe we're going to have that we've never seen before on Amazon for this fourth quarter. And keep in mind, um, Target is betting on the season is going to start earlier. Prime Day was not in June or July that we think Prime Day is moved to September, October. So you're gonna get Prime Day, Black Friday, Cyber Monday, Christmas sales, all like truncated into this short time frame with more sales volume coming into Amazon and other platforms. I think we are in unprecedented times and this fourth quarter is gonna be, I'm planning for it. I'm definitely planning for it. It's gonna be the most incredible sales volume we've ever seen in our Amazon businesses, in my humble opinion. So what can you do right now to add both seasonal and evergreen bum bundles that are just going to take advantage of those elements for this fourth quarter. I want you to think about how that would affect your business for this, for 2020. How's that gonna affect your numbers by having those bundles? And then the weed stuff, you know, how to prep stuff. We all cover that in the bundle masterclass. It's covered, those the logistical things are, I talk about them, I teach them in the bundle masterclass. So what other questions do we have? We had we had a couple more little questions come in and chat that were, were pretty good. Shoot. Um, the first one is, if we join the master class, how will questions be answered? When you join the master class, you get the uh, private group, uh, and we will answer all questions in there, not just me. I'm in there personally, but also these 600 and something, a lot of bundlers are in there uh, who have their own niches and their own perspective. They will also answer your questions. You've got a lot of really helpful people in there. And you'll be one of those people when you become a master bundler. At the end of the course, you'll, you'll be a master bundler, then you'll help other people too, who are just learning to bundle. So yeah, it's very supportive group. We'll answer your questions and help you out. So the next question was, um, and, and I, I can talk to the, about this one. If, if I'm sorry if I missed this, but are you allowed to include a brand's product in your bundle without written permission or consent from the brand? No, you, you should definitely get permission and consent from the brand. You should absolutely do that. Yep, I do that as well. And that also yep. gives me an opening for a conversation with a brand. Uh, remember I talked about like one of the, the biggest complaints people have when they're starting and, and working in wholesale is I can't get brand owners to approve me. My brand owners, when, when I present them with uh, value props, I lead with bundles. And I say, hey, look, you're doing really great over here, but I can increase your sales by creating some custom bundles. Um, and I can even have you part of the process and, and get, um, I can offer to like, help me understand your customer. What your customer wants is what I would say to them. You help me understand what they want. I will put my secret sauce on it um, as a bundler and somebody who sells not just on Amazon, but multi-platforms. And I can help you sell more of this product without creating more competition on your existing listings. How does that sound to you? We can start with one product. That's how I approach the conversation. I've never had a no. So Mike the Scott. next one <laughs> is, is <laughs> what's that? That was, a, that was a good answer. The next one is you mentioned buying liquidation lots and bundling. 
would you be susceptible uh, being suspended since your lo- since your receipts might not hold water if asked for by Amazon? Might not hold water. What does that mean? Not sure what that means. You might, I think they're they're saying with liquidation, do you run the risk of not having good enough receipts to solve problems with Amazon? And I'll, I'll be honest, we don't do enough liquidation to to know. So um, my. Uh, but Barbara can probably answer that. Yeah, so I have my own bundle. I created a brand. I, I bought gs1.org UPC codes. Uh, and when you do a GTIN exemption, you'll have a an exemption on there. You're not going to, um, yeah, I, I'd say when in doubt, I always default to this, ask Amazon. But I've never, I've never been shut down. Uh, the only um, glitch I had was a couple of years ago when some guy bought a bath mat that he wanted for free and he sold his new, but that had nothing to do with I mean, <laughs> Ours now, with ours, we we don't do liquidation, but ours is ours. Yeah, and liquidation. Uh, uh, what I what what I see in my head when I say liquidation might be different from what you're seeing. So I'll give you an example of a liquidation. Um, I, I messaged Dan this. I was so excited about it. it. Happened last week, last Thursday or Friday. So some of the opportunities happening right now, unfortunately, uh, are brand owners and and manufacturers, they can't go to trade shows, which is where they get a big chunk of new business. So because of the relationships I have with a lot of my brand owners, I'll get a phone call or a message saying, Barbara, we have this opportunity. We need to move this stuff out. We're hurting. You know, we're trying to pay our bills. We had to lay people up, whatever. And I got one of those calls last week. And it was this, um, it, the, you know, I love niches, right? It's a flamingo duffel bag. It's got these flamingos on it now what did i say earlier in this put it in the chat what did i tell you was a super hot market if you're watching bloomberg news if you drive by any rv dealership right now rv sales have gone off the track you have a lot more people who are rving rv retired people flamingos duffel bag they can put their you know truncate it they can throw it underneath their rv so i'm like okay by the end of it, the converse, short conversation with him, they were so willing to move this on, they discounted the bag by 80% off of wholesale because they wanted it gone. So here's a, let's see what you learned during this webinar. What can I bundle with a flamingo duffel bag? What can I bundle with that? That somebody will find useful who has that bag. The buyer is gonna be a woman. Okay, let's put our customer hat on. Probably gonna be a woman or somebody buying a gift for a woman. What else do women like? I showed you an example of one during my examples over on this table. Duffel bag and don't overthink it, girls. Put it in the chat. Let's see if anybody gets it. Boom. Now, give me a wallet. Anybody say wallet. All right. So I went to another supplier who's one of my suppliers and I said, I need flamingo wallets. Oh, Barbara, here you go. And if you buy X amount, you get. And now I've already gotten um, discounted deals from him in the past. So I have a relationship. So I go and say, okay, if that wallet is $3 on your site, can I have it for two? Yes. That bundle will be like really fast. Two pieces. What question was I answering? Sorry. Now once I, I can go back to, I can go back to, it, yes, I think sorry, it was yes. dealing with um, receipts as receipts. Oh, receipts. I get the receipts from those two suppliers. Well, so for us. So that flag was a liquidation product. That fling, I bought them all. It was a liquidation product, but I have a, because they're liquidating their stock. So some people hear liquidation and they, they picture a big truckload of random stuff. That's not my definition of liquidation. Sorry, I came back around to it for you. But I have an invoice from the supplier. So with us, uh, um, ours is not liquidation. Like I said, we don't have a lot of experience with liquidation, but how we handle this is number one, now we're far enough along in the process that our brand and product has a trademark it's actually in brand registry yep. so whenever we issue an invoice whenever whenever there's an invoice issued it's from us as the supplier to us as the seller yep. because we issue a manufactured product and that's the way you got to think of a, a of a bundle is if you know let's say it's a bundle that has long legs as a brand for you then that is a brand that you can actually there, there's ways to go about getting your trademark. That's one of the things we worked with a lawyer and was able to secure that trademark. So it's, it, it's effectively, it became a private label brand for us. Right. And that's one of the things you can look at is, is that. And so 
think about it from this perspective of if you create that bundle, you've gotten your GS1 barcode, and that means you're a real product, which yep. means that you are now the manufacturer of that product, and you can issue yourself an invoice. Yep, that's it. He gave the, the short-winded, concise answer. I went off on a tangent, sorry. <laughs> okay, what other questions can we answer? Uh, let's see my scroll down here. Da, 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 da. I'm just randomly like picking things out here. Uh, if you have a bundle, what next steps I have to do for selling on Amazon? We cover that in the bundle masterclass. Of course, you have to uh, photographs, create a listing, um, optimize your listing, write copy, do your keyword research. Uh, we, we'll, when you follow the checklist that I give you in the bundle masterclass, um, you'll uh, you'll be able to um, walk through each of those steps and with training um, and exercises as well. So three yeah. people are raising their hands. I'm not sure why. I, I think we've got time for, for one more and we'll draw this to a close for everybody. Shoot, I'll let you pick it. All right, cool. Uh, so someone says, I'm still understanding Amazon as an international seller. Is this concept harder to do for someone from a different company or a country rather? Nope. Is the concept of bundling uh, different items to my home, a country, to put them together, then ship back to the U.S.? And the answer is no, you wouldn't have to do that. You, you would just identify the items, have them shipped to a prep center in the U.S., and they would put them together. So you wouldn't have to ship them to, you know, the U.K. and then ship them back to the U.S., nothing like that, nothing to worry about there. Right. So I, I think it's kind of, um, you have a unique competitive advantage. This is where my brain goes, always goes to customer centric. I teach customer centric approach to bundling and to uh, research. So my brain first goes to, you are in a unique position to understand, let's say you're German. Say something in the chat. So if you are German and you live in Germany and you create bundles of German centric food. I grew up in a German household. I miss Spätzle and the little Wiener Schnitzel. Right? I miss that stuff. If you created a bundle of gourmet German food sold to expats in America, you would understand me as your target market better than an American who's never been to Germany, doesn't speak German, has never eaten German food. Does that make sense? So leverage the unique knowledge that you have personally and create bundles that speak to the customer and then you can sell them anywhere in the world. Make sense? Silence. <laughs> I, 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 yeah, makes sense to me. Awesome. Dylan's taking notes. I know I'm doing a good job. Yeah. So guys, come join me in the bundlemasterclass.com slash TWF. We're going to give you a ton of bonuses, as I said. And, um, they're going to throw in bonuses of their own as well to get you started. Uh, you get all this. And uh, look forward to seeing you in there. And we're going to dump the price by $200 for you and get you in there for just $497. This is a comprehensive course. This is just glossing. I think you can tell we're two hours into this. I think you can pretty much tell by my training style that I give it all and then some. And when I learn something new, I create more content for you. So it's a gift that keeps giving $497 for bundles um, to add bundles to your fourth quarter inventory and evergreen, um, I think is a, a really great opportunity. Come join us and have some fun with us and make some money um, with bundles. Bundlemasterclass.com slash TWF. Any final words from my dudes at TWF? No, I, we appreciate you being able to put this together. It's like, it's just one of the things that I think that a lot of people just miss or forget to do or, or, or it's a big opportunity always has big, been a big opportunity on Amazon. I've seen it been a big opportunity for us in the past. And it's something that we're a recent success with. It means we're going to try to double down on it in the future. Awesome. Anything I can do to help you guys, um, you know, improve your bundles, please shoot a, uh, um, a, an email to me. So on a final note, um, if this was a value to guys, put fun in the chat. So we're all leaving on a positive note because you can tell I'm very positive and Dylan's chick magnet and, um, right, Dylan and Dan are chick magnets because I know they all wear black t-shirts all the time, Dan is. So put fun in the chat. So we all leave on a fun, exciting note as we go back to our businesses. If this was useful for you, um, really, really happy that I was able to serve you today. Again, I'm Barbara Drazga with the Bundle Masterclass. On masterclass.com slash TWF. Please come join us. Looking forward to working with you guys. See you guys yeah. later. Thank you. Thanks, Dan. <laughs>
Thanks, guys. Bye.